hang loose, Brock. That webbing will melt in a couple of hours. You can't do this! I already have. Spider-Man the Animated Series left an indelible impression on kids throughout the 90s. Introducing them to Peter Parker and his varied cast of friends and foes, the show covered just about every aspect of the wall crawler's mythos. But when choosing the perfect episode, it's hard to top the series finale. Farewell Spider-Man, an episode that manages to add new elements to the Spider-Man lore and perfectly summarize why he's such a beloved character. Why did you do that? Let's see. You level Manhattan, destroy Queens, why would I be mad at you? <laughs> Before we keep going, if you want more Spider-Man content, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our releases. 2022 marks the 60th anniversary of Amazing Fantasy number 15, and with the character's unwavering popularity, it's clear that Spider-Man could very well be around for at least another 60 years. But what is it about Spider-Man that makes him such a beloved character? And in turn, how does the finale of Spider-Man the Animated Series capture those elements. First and foremost, what makes Peter Parker so relatable is his internal emotional conflicts. Right from his first appearance, Peter Parker is shown to be a tormented victim of bullies, but also an angry and spiteful young man. Someday I'll show them, Peter says about his bullies in his first appearance. Someday they'll be sorry they laughed at me. He's not a morally flawless person like Superman or Captain America. He often struggles to make the hard choices, but thanks in part to the people around him and the lessons he's learned, he always does the right thing. Farewell Spider-Man is part two of a two-part episode which follows Spider-Man teaming up with a group of multiverse counterparts at the behest of Madam Web. Their mission is to stop a version of Peter that bonded with the Carnage symbiote known as Spider-Carnage. If all this sounds familiar, it's because Farewell Spider-Man is, ostensibly, our first foray into the Spider-Verse, the multi-dimensional concept that is focused entirely on the Spider-Man corner of Marvel Comics. Dan Slott, the writer of the original Spider-Verse miniseries, says the inspiration for the Spider-Verse comic came from his work on the script of the 2010 video game Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. However, Farewell Spider-Man was the proof of concept that a multi-dimensional Spider-Man team-up could work. Spider-Man is a famously malleable character who can be dropped into all sorts of scenarios from grounded street battles with gangsters to cosmic adventures on other planets. But the multiverse is a vast frontier that Spider-Man has never crossed. If Farewell Spider-Man had been a disaster, it might have scared creatives away from ever making a Spider-Verse project again. One of the main reasons for this success is the way the episode uses its characterization of each variant to explore the core aspects of Peter Parker's character. The two variants who receive the most spotlight in this episode are Armor Spider-Man, heretofore referred to as Spider-Armor. I should be in charge of this group. I'm the real Spider-Man. And Spider-Carnage. How oh, I despise you! And for that reason, you must be obliterated. These two characters sit on opposite ends of the emotional spectrum with the prime Peter Parker right in the middle. Spider armor comes from a world that, at first glance, seems like Peter Parker's dream world. It's a world where Spider-Man is beloved by all, including J. Jonah Jameson. The city builds science centers in his name, and Peter is a wealthy inventor. It's even, as revealed by the end of the episode, a world where Uncle Ben is still alive. For all intents and purposes, this should be Peter Parker's ideal life. However, this is a version of Peter Parker who has not been forged into altruistic heroism by the fires of his many defeats. Spider armor is often brash, impulsive, and careless in battle. The episode's writer, John Semper Jr., provides a nuanced approach to the character of Spider-Man that you rarely see. It would be easy to assume that, with Uncle Ben still alive, Peter's life would be perfect. But instead, this episode gives us a version of Peter who is still a good hero, but not a truly great one. Without the martyrdom of Uncle Ben and the lessons learned from that tragedy, Peter cannot become the best version of himself. Contrast this with Spider Carnage, a version of Peter who gave into those selfish, petulant impulses that we glimpsed all the way back in Amazing Fantasy number 15. Spider Carnage is a Peter Parker who embraced the Carnage symbiote, becoming a twisted version of himself who has abandoned the lessons of Uncle Ben. Additionally, this version of Earth is based on the infamous Spider-Man comic crossover, The Clone Saga, a story that introduced a new character, My name is Ben Riley who claimed he was the true Peter Parker, and the one readers had been following for years 
was actually a clone. The difference on this Earth is that the return of Ben Riley drives Peter into an identity crisis. So much of Peter's identity is embedded in his relationship with his Uncle Ben. His moral code is defined by the lessons he learned from his uncle, as well as the lessons he learned from the day his uncle died. The minute he believes he could be a clone, all of that introspection is called into question. This lack of understanding of himself makes him seek out the symbiote to give him a purpose again and give up on heroism. Subtextually, Spider Carnage can be interpreted as a personification of two of the worst Spider-Man stories, The Clone Saga and Maximum Carnage. Both of these stories are the epitome of 90s comic book excess. They were years-long, dragged-out storylines that didn't seem to have any semblance of an ending in sight. A creative nadir for the character who is arguably Marvel Comics' greatest creation. When it's revealed Spider Carnage wants to destroy all of reality, it becomes a meta-commentary on the way these bloated stories nearly destroyed Spider-Man comics. This makes it all the more appropriate, then, that the Prime Spider-Man defeats Spider-Carnage by appealing to the base morality that still exists within this dark reflection. Peter sees the same impulses he has struggled with since the death of Uncle Ben, and he reaches out to Spider-Carnage by seeking out the Uncle Ben of Spider-Armor's reality. This version of Uncle Ben reaches out to his misguided nephew and manages to bring back the humanity the symbiote has suppressed. Do you remember what I taught you about great power? Yes, with great power, there must come great responsibility. Here, Uncle Ben is a representation of all that makes Spider-Man great, the simple morality tale of a flawed hero trying to be better. Spider-Carnage then sacrifices himself to save the multiverse, restoring his lost humanity. This sacrifice reaffirms that Spider-Man is a hero defined by his morality, and most importantly, his flaws. This is what makes a Spider-Verse possible. Each of the Spider-People in this episode and beyond represent roads not taken for our favorite webhead, creating the fodder for stories that have sustained for 60 years. The episode ends with a heartwarming meeting between Prime Spider-Man and none other than Stan Lee. Spider-Man, having met so many alternate versions of himself, tells Lee that despite all of the struggles he's faced, For once, I like my life. I like myself. And for the first time ever, I wouldn't want to change anything about me. Peter Parker ends the series with peace of mind to know that his life, or all of its troubles, has made him the best version of himself. One must imagine Spider-Man happy and more certain than ever that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. It has been a long, hard journey. And I think you are finally entitled to some happiness. Amen to that, dear lady. Amen to that. From his great triumphs to his great tragedies, everyone can see themselves in Spider-Man. By introducing the multiverse to Spider-Man, we not only come to understand Peter Parker better as a character, but open the door to so many different Spider-People to be given the spotlight. The Spider-Verse has grown so much since Farewell Spider-Man aired. Ultimately, what makes this the perfect episode is the way it uses the various Spider-Characters to explore what makes Peter Parker who he is and why we all love him. His enduring popularity is rooted in his ability to inspire every one of us and remind us that, no matter our flaws, we can all be heroes. But what do you think? Did this final episode of Spider-Man the Animated Series stick the landing? Let us know your thoughts and remember to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic.